Hello community! Today we have a brand new research and it is called TPU. And I know you might say, hey, you made a mistake. No, it is DPU. No? You remember the direct preference optimization here? Because at first we had here the reinforcement learning from human feedback from OpenAI and then we had DPO eliminating the need for complex reinforcement learning procedures. No, we have something brand new and it is test time preference optimization. And you say, what? It is not training time? No, it is inference time based reinforcement learning. So <laughs> let's open this video with this beautiful new idea. And I know I have seen it too. You might say, but wait, Meta, Meta just published here some amazing new ideas. Yesterday, January 27, 2025 here, they developed here a reinforcement learning model they call Mr. Q, for whatever reasons. And I already started to prepare this for a video. And if I had a look at it, I thought, hey, there's a beautiful theoretical motivation why we need a linear decomposition of the value function here or if we have here, if we want to calculate here the value error and how we can do this, how is, where are the boundary condition, or if we look at the loss function here, we have a clear separation of the reward learning and the dynamics learning. And of course, this linearity causes problems, but you know, with some simple key modification here, we can find ways around and we can find other function that we design in a real particular way. So there exists now mathematically an optimal policy function and then if we use this here for the encoder, for the loss function, that is a little bit more, a little bit more of the complicated side. And we modify the reward loss function. Of course, we have to modify this. But then look at the value function. We get such a beautiful numerical explanation with Uber. And you might say, yeah, great. And you know, even in the annex, they have yet a complete mathematical proof. But you know what? I thought, okay, before I show you this, before I dive into this, I want to find if there's a simpler solution. And I said, you know what would be nice? To find an easy model that is as good as this one. And there was this spark of an idea that I said, you know, it's not always that you have to be extremely complex, that you need five PhDs in mathematics to come up with a new idea. What about if we are just genius? So I found this paper here. And I, when I read here, hey, this is a new framework that aligns here the LLM outputs with the human preferences. And I said, oh, I know this. During inference, and I started to say, hey, hey, hey. But then, thereby removing the need to update the model parameters. And I thought, this is it. This is what I'm looking for. I want to show you this new methodology. So sorry, Meta, but there's something much more fascinating. And the author said, hey, we have to address two major problems. The first question is, can we align our LLMs during inference while achieving a performance on par that is similar to the training time methodologies, DPO, that we know? And second, can we leverage interpretable textual feedback rather than this artificial numerical scores that we have to normalize and whatever for the preference optimization. And I thought this is, this is really challenging because we go here really to the limits of the LLM. Can we use here the abilities of the LLM, the reasoning abilities, the analytical abilities of an LLM to provide here a reinforcement learning methodology? So let's look here at the core of this idea. It is a little tiny touch complicated, but you will see it's simple if we have the first one. So TPO iteratively improves the output via interaction with the reward model. Remember, reward model. This will be the only numerical model that we have to deal with. So at each inference time optimization step, the newly generated responses are simply scored by the reward model. You remember from minus one to plus one or from zero to 10. And we have the highest and the lowest score responses. Our policy model now analyzes here the strength of the chosen responses and the shortcomings of the rejected responses. And the policy model is now producing a textual loss or a textual reward in the form of a critique. And LLMs can beautifully critique. 
So this textual loss now serves here as the policy model interpretation of the numerical feedback provided by the reward model. And based on this textual loss, the model generates specific suggestions, and this are referred to as textual gradients. And now we have introduced something completely fascinating. Textual loss, textual reward, and textual gradients. You know, we are absolutely in the schema of the classical calculation here of reward models. But you know, there's one question we have to answer now. But does it work? What are the results? We don't dive into this and then it doesn't work. And the beauty is, hey, if you take here an unaligned LAMA 70B, supervised fine-tune, and we apply our TPO methodology on this in the inference run, it surpasses here just with two iteration all the strongly aligned counterparts of the 70B instruct models here on nearly all benchmarks. So a big yes, it works beautifully. So let's have a look at the fact. Let's have a look here at this publication. This is by our colleagues at Shanghai AI Laboratory and the Chinese University of Hong Kong. And they are so gracious and they give us here the complete code. You have here the GitHub link here. And I will show you this in two minutes time. It is, everything is there. You can start right away. There's just one thing you have to be careful, but beautiful paper. Let's have a look at this paper. And I just want to give you this visualization. This explains everything. So what we have? We have now the test time preference optimization. And you see, it is built up to our classical numerical calculation. We have here the variables. We have here the loss function. We have here to compute the gradient. We have to optimize here the variable. And then we start all over again. So this is a schema that we know. But now there's only one numerical calculation, and this is here the reward model score. So what did we start? We have a question, hey, what are some of the best universities in the world for studying robotics? And we got four responses from our agent. One, two, three, four. And then the reward model now evaluates this and gives a score. So as you can see here, the first answer is the worst answer. The second is ah, medium, but the third one is the real good one. So we have the good one and the bad one. This is all we need. And then we go on and we say, hey, you are a language model tasked with evaluating a chosen, a good response by comparing with a rejected response to a user query. Analyze the strength and the weaknesses of each response. Go step by step. Explain why one is chosen, why one is rejected. And here we have now the optimized result. And then we have here the gradient. And the text is easy. You say, hey, you are part of an optimization system that improves the variable. You are the gradient, the feedback engine. Your only responsible is to give intelligent and creative feedback and constructive criticism to variables. And you see here the optimized variables. You have an optimizer. You notice, you tell this, hey, you are part of an optimization system that improves the variable. You will be asked to creatively and critically improve your prompts, your solution to the problems, to improve the code, or add any other text-based variables. And you know what? This implementation, i show you the code implementation. There is, there is a beautiful surprise waiting for you. Yeah, and then we start all over again. So you see, it is the schema that we know from the, all the numerical calculations, but now, more or less, we are text Base. And in the annex of this publication, you have here all those prompts in detail. You can have a deep dive. You can enjoy this for hours. So here, really, we have here to find, I wouldn't call it prompt engineering because there's something much better than prompt engineering. But you understand, the only reward model is here. Now, this particular reward model that they use is this one here. If you're not really sure about the reward model, I would recommend this publication. I know it is from December 2023, but it's really an outstanding paper. So remember, the only explicit numerical computation in TPO is here the reward model scoring of the candidate responses. And they went here with a hugging face available reward function. And this is it. 
Please be careful. This is really sensitive to this function. There are a lot of other functions you can find here publicly available. Choose the right function, the right reward model for your particular task. And here we are now. The textual gradient now is a symbolic representation of the reward model feedback. And you know what? It is generated entirely in a natural language. And there's no backpropagation, there's numerical gradient calculations. There's nothing that was so beautiful in Meta's publication at the beginning of this video. But we work now in natural language. And you know, I told you there's something beautiful. The implementation of this TPO idea is now done in a framework that we know. It is text grad. And if you are not a subscriber of this channel, which I think is almost impossible, you know that seven months ago I did this video where I showed you that text grad is so much better than DSPy here. And text grad invented by Stanford University, like DSPy here, is really an outstanding methodology. And you know what? The authors chosen to implement TPO with text grad. So 41 minutes in this video wait for you if you are not familiar with TextGrad. Otherwise, isn't this beautiful? So here we have now the GitHub for TPO with the complete code implementation. Everything is waiting for you. This is so nice. And if you go here, have a look here at the Python code for the reward model, you can go step by step. And here you have the TPO reward model in detail. So it is there waiting for you. So coming now to an end, let's have a short summary because we still have to answer here one question. Why? Why should we do it? Let me give you an argument. The total costs of TPO, of this new methodology, is less than 0.01% of the computational overhead that incurs if we do the DPO training, the DPO alignment phase. Plus, there's another argument for it. Normally, this huge instruction model, they need a real huge training data set, and that should be even bigger than the ultra feedback data set that we normally work with, thereby making here TPO's relative cost advantage greater still. I mean, can you imagine the cost is 0.01% of TPO, and you get almost the same performance? Sometimes it's better, but let's say it's on the same level. Or let's go here with the official conclusion by the authors of the study. TPO provides a lightweight, interpretable, and efficient alternative to the training time preference optimization by leveraging the inherent strength of LLM, the natural language, at test time. Isn't this outstanding? Unbelievable. We have now a TPO at test time, at inference time, that costs a fraction of the classical training time DPO alignment. And I really have to test this. I have to use it. I have to implement here text grad here. So I'm looking forward for the next days to play around a little bit. And maybe if you're interested, I make a video and I tell you then my personal ideas, whatever I experienced with this. We have now a test time preference optimization for the alignment of the LLM outputs with the human values that you want, how your LLM responds, and it is test time preference optimization TPO with a really amazing cost advantage. If you enjoyed this video, why not subscribe and you will be surprised by my next video.